Hey guys, welcome to Juicy Tea, where I read out the best stories on Reddit so you don't have to. The funny, shocking, and satisfyingly juicy. My dad hates my best friend, so I gave his sex toys to her. Our first story comes from the Petty Revenge subreddit, posted by Honeybun6. Okay, so my dad and my mum are happily married, but I found his giant pile of porn magazines and toys that he clearly hid from her. They were in boxes labeled do not open. My parents moved again and I accidentally found them because I opened the boxes even though there was a warning. My dad hates my best friend, who has a borderline personality disorder, but is very respectful and supportive. I texted her asking if she wanted the toys because I don't need my mom finding out about him. He's literally 67 and definitely past male menopause. My best friend said she'll happily take them. I'll take the secret about my dad to the grave as long as it means keeping my mum from either divorcing him or not talking to him. I have so many questions! Like, after you opened the first box, why did you continue opening them? Why would you think your best friend would want them? Why did she say yes? What's a girl gonna do with male sex toys? And what are you gonna say if he asks you about them? Down in the comments, Chrissy Cole 87 says, a lot of couples use porn and toys together. I'm thinking the warning label was probably for the kids. You probably just gave away your parents' sex stash. Also, who in the actual F would want a bunch of used sex toys from someone else's dad? Yikes! Yeah, that's so gross. I really hope this story's made up. Am I the a-hole for asking my sister, what did you expect, after her husband left her for a younger woman? Put by a throwaway account. My 48 female sister Caroline, 45 female, has spent her last 20 years bragging because she's 10 years younger than her husband Ethan, 55 male. That by the time she hits 40 plus, Ethan's sex drive will have plummeted too low to pursue others, and the 20 somethings wouldn't want to date men past 35. Ethan was 34, and my sister was a week from turning 24 when they first got together officially. At the time, 34-year-old Ethan was a newly minted senior VP with a 35-year-old wife, Emma, and a 4-year-old daughter. Ethan told her that Emma had become a sanctimonious mummy type after she gave birth, stopped waking up at 5am to exercise, withheld sex and became a negative nagging shrew. Ethan physically left Emma for Caroline, but it was Emma who fought for divorce. Caroline was angry because she claims Emma was the one who filed for divorce, yet she's the one who became bitter and hostile after the divorce happened. For a while I sympathised with Caroline because everyone criticised her relationship. However, it felt like Caroline and Ethan made the fact that Ethan was punching above his weight in terms of having a younger woman, their entire personality as a couple and individuals. I think it's because Ethan was poor into his early 20s and said he thought the best he could ever do was the sort of attractive, after a few beers, truck stop waitress. Back then, it was much easier for someone with no connections to rise, and Ethan did. Then, after his divorce and before marrying Caroline, Ethan started his own firm and began making even more money. Caroline signed a prenup but maintained that it would never be used. Caroline used to laugh when Emma told her there's always a younger woman out there. Caroline replied that she'd asked Ethan and he'd said that a 10 year age gap was gigantic to him and that Caroline was the combination of someone who he'd always see as much younger while also being able to relate to her. Caroline would also say in a place where a stepdaughter could hear her saying it that Emma aged so much faster than Ethan and that she's likely regularly mistaken for her daughter's grandmother. Wow, and you sympathise with this woman? Why? Well. All this about he'll always see me as much younger disappeared a few years ago. Caroline started becoming very withdrawn and miserable. She'd act out in ways, but Ethan wouldn't even bat an eye at her antics. Then, suddenly, just before the holidays, Ethan picked a fight by telling her that her hand mannerisms are annoying and left the house. She found out that he was living with a 24-year-old assistant that he hired with no experience. Now, despite Tex saying the three kids miss him and she doesn't deserve this when she's never denied him sex, he's filed for divorce. Caroline came to me crying and would go on rants about how Ethan will realise a 24 year old sees him as a grandpa 
and I rolled my eyes and said, what'd you expect? And that I had no sympathy when for years I've had to listen to her saying, age gap detractors are bitter losers and that Ethan will always see her as a prize. I also told her that 10 years is basically the starting point when it comes to trophy wife relationships. She got angry and screamed, are you calling me old when Ethan's pushing 60? And left, am I the a-hole? Down in the comments, Insidious Colossus says, when a man marries his mistress, he creates a vacancy. I can't sell food? Fine, I'll sell plates then. Our next story comes from the Petty Revenge subreddit, posted by Wikipedia. 14 year old me was a menace to society. She had a fair share of respect for authority and rules, but if he tried to impose a ridiculous rule on her, she found the tiniest of loopholes and she'd exploit it to kingdom come. Set the scene. I'm in middle school and it's almost Easter, so every class is putting up a kiosk for a bazaar. You're allowed to sell anything. Legal, obviously. Crafts, pastries, art, etc. My class wants to make some money to fund a trip. I've always liked cooking and making desserts, so I offered to make crepes for us to sell. I get up at an ungodly hour every morning and make them to make sure they're fresh. I wear gloves and a hairnet and make sure to sanitize everything to make sure it was safe. A classmate brings bananas because his dad owns a grocery store, so when else brings honey, their relatives sent them because they live in a rural area, etc. You get the point. Team effort. We're up and running in no time and making bank. At lunch break, we always have a huge queue of kids waiting to buy our crepes. Unfortunately, that means the other kiosks aren't getting as much business. We're on good terms with most of the kids from the other kiosks and they're chill about it. One kiosk has more traffic than the others because they're giving out homemade cookies with every purchase. So, after a few days, the girls from the cookie kiosk come over to us along with the headmaster. He says we can't sell food anymore because it's unfair to the other kiosks. I pointed out that the girls are also giving out cookies. To which he replies, you can give out whatever you want for free, including food, but you cannot sell it. It's unfair competition. How is free less competitive? Again, if he'd shut it down because of a health concern, we'd have dropped it at the bat of an eye. Health is no joke. But claiming it was unfair that we had a good business idea just didn't sit right with me. Everyone else was free to do what we were doing. I kept thinking about what he said. You can see where this is going, right? We were serving the crepes on those generic white paper plates. So I buy a food safe marker, flip some plates over and start doodling. And some of my classmates with a knack for art follow suit. We mostly did cartoon and anime characters. Then I hang up some plates around our kiosk and change our sign to cartoon character art, $2 a piece, plus a crepe of your choice with every purchase. And we are back in business. And just like clockwork, the next day, the cookie kiosk girls are back at our kiosk with the headmaster again. I thought I made myself clear, he says. You did, sir, I reply and point at the sign. After a long silence, a calm face palm and a long, I don't get paid enough for this sigh, he relents and I give him a crepe on the house. He also suggested I become a lawyer. Petty malicious compliance, delicious, <laughs> literally. Send me an invoice and I'll pay for it. Our next story comes from the Petty Revenge subreddit. Posted by Introvert Hufflepuff 8 Some years ago, my wife and I moved to a new state. A little under two months after moving, she ended up in the emergency room and needed to stay in hospital for over a week. This would be hard for any spouse to go through. Now, a little backstory. I spent a lot of time going in and out of doctor's offices and hospitals due to scoliosis treatments and learning differences. My parents, and my mother in particular, helped me through all the surgeries and hospital visits. All of the medical issues I had created a lot of trauma for me, but at the time of the story, I hadn't successfully worked through yet. I've now been in therapy for the last three years and I'm working through this and additional trauma. Additionally, as a graduation present, my mother purchased me a new car. The vehicle and loan were in her name while it was being paid off. My wife and I drove the vehicle, but hadn't yet transferred the registration to our name. This will all be relevant. Living in a major city, toll roads were unavoidable and we hadn't yet got our own toll tag. 
So in the meantime, we are going to the online portal and paying as we went. Now back to the story, my wife is in the hospital, I am not handling this well due to my unresolved trauma. My dad is in the same city as us and came to the hospital to support me and visit my wife which I really appreciated. My mother who was in another state hadn't reached out to me for a few days while all this was going on. Eventually she did and reached out by text saying something like, Hey OP, sorry to hear about X, hope she's okay. With the text, she included a bill from the toll road totaling $3.49 and said, I went ahead and paid the balance you owe the toll company, please pay me back as soon as you can. At the time, I was so in shock about the situation with my wife that I didn't really process what was happening so I said sure and that I'd send her payment soon. She responded with, a check will be fine. After this, I went back to worrying about my wife and put it at the back of my mind. A few days later, she was released from hospital and given the all clear to go home. Once she'd taken time to recover and things started to get back to normal, I let my wife know what my mum had said and showed her the text exchange. My wife was livid. She knows how much medical stuff I went through as a kid and how difficult this was for me as well as her. And she knows that my mother is well aware of all of this. When she saw the total that we owed my mother, we decided that instead of sending a check, we were going to send a card with coins in it. This was around Thanksgiving Christmas time. Originally, we'd wanted to send her all pennies. However, the postage was too expensive so we opted for quarters, dimes and nickels. We sent her a card with a message along the lines of, Here is what we owe you. Merry Christmas. I didn't hear from her once she received it but I was told later at our family Christmas that she'd called my dad about it and asked him to talk to me and didn't understand why I would do something like this to her. Too long didn't read, my mum sent me a toll booth invoice for less than $4 while my wife was in the hospital. Thank you for reading. Just for clarification as there seems to be some debate in the comments. I had discussed fully transferring the car and loan into my name prior to moving as some other incidents had occurred which made me want to go no contact but she refused. Once the loan was paid in full, I was able to get it titled to my name. I was worried that once he'd paid off the loan, she'd be like, nope, this is my car and report it as stolen. Remember, I post new content every day, so subscribe for more juicy tea.